Hey guys, this is podcast 4.6. This is the last one in the chapter for honors biology. And we're going to do just a very, very brief look at nucleic acids and what those are, what those polymers are in your body. And we know that nucleic acids make DNA and RNA. And DNA and RNA carry the hereditary information. So this is what makes you, you. Your DNA is unique to you. Um, it tells your body how to function, how to, how to make different proteins, how to do pretty much everything that your body needs to do. And these nucleic acids are made of three parts. We have a deoxyribose, and this is a carbohydrate, remember. remember. And this is part of the backbone. And that'll make more sense in just a minute. I'm gonna use a lot of pictures in this one. I'm not gonna do a whole lot of writing. Um, so we've got deoxyribose that makes the carbohydrate backbone. A phosphate group is a connector or a link. It, it links to each ribose or each deoxyribose. Okay, and I'm simplifying a lot right now. We're gonna get into this when we do molecular genetics, but essentially a phosphate group is like a little connector in the chain and then a base, and this is um, a, similar to an amino acid. This is the actual nucleic acid. Okay, and there are four bases. And we're gonna take a look at those in just a minute. So let's, let's uh, go ahead and just look at some pictures right now. Uh, let me change my screen real quick. So let's take a look at ribose versus deoxyribose. Oops. Okay, so look here on the, on the ribose on the right hand side. Okay, it's a, remember it's a five carbon chain. One, two, three, four, five and it's in a pentagon shape, this is a pentose, and we've got H's and OH's off of everything, okay? This OH group right here is the one we're comparing to. Notice on the deoxyribose then that the OH is missing, okay, right here, okay? That is the deoxy, we've lost an oxygen. We've taken an oxygen away from this ribose and it has to do with how these link up to one another. Uh, a phosphate group is also, um, it's another piece of the puzzle. Um, this is the phosphate group right here, okay? And this R is where the, the carb or the deoxyribose attaches, okay? So the phosphate group is this PO4H2, okay? And this whole thing is used to connect um, each deoxyribose to the next. And then the entire backbone, when we put it all together, oh, I don't have that picture open. Give me one second to find that picture. Switch my screens. Okay, we've got the DNA structure right here. So here's the deoxyribose. Okay, not, <clears throat> not including this pentagon right here, but each deoxyribose right here. Okay, we're missing an oxygen on that hydrogen right there. A phosphate links to that using dehydration synthesis. Okay, so one of these hydrogens is lost as it links up with the OH group on the deoxyribose. So we get an oxygen carbon bond right there. And then this is the base. Okay, and they're called G for guanine, C for cytosine, T for toluene, and A for adenine. And there's only four of them. Okay, and each of these bases has their own structure. We're not terribly concerned about those right now, but this comes off of the other side of the ribose, and this is where the structure meets function, right? On fructose, we've got a CH2OH on the one, the first carbon over here. Ribose doesn't have that, and that allows us to use dehydration synthesis to attach one of these bases. So a bigger view of the bases is right here. So here's the thymine, the adenine, the guanine, and the cytosine, okay? And each of these, again, can hydrogen bond, or um, excuse me, not hydrogen bond, dehydrate into a ribose, and then the ribose is dehydrate with a phosphate group to connect each other. And again, this carries hereditary information. I know I just showed you a lot of pictures. I'm okay if you don't know the exact structures as long as you have the gist of what, uh, what you're looking at with the DNA.